Hello YouTube, it's me again, um, the Norwegian artist Knut Andre Viksolan. Uh, I am now posting a time-lapse video of um, uh, the Holocaust survivor painting, uh, Samuel Leon Steinmann, um, which I just posted. Uh, I thought it might be interesting for you to see how uh, it progresses. And it's like 15 minutes, maybe that's too long, but I think that was okay to to see some of the detail work I do. Uh, if you want to see the full um, uh, painting tutorial with all the uh, lectures and documentaries I used as a background sound, uh, you can find it a link there. And if you want to see the event, which I also just posted, uh, and I also put uh, English subtitles on, you will find it up there. And you can subscribe, and you can even become a patron if you want, if you like to support my work. Um, yeah, and I will thank you for watching my videos. It would be fantastic if you share them on social media and with your friends and put them into playlists and just just put my videos on even if you don't see them and just let them roll to increase my view time which is actually quite high already. Uh, so uh, I hope you enjoy and uh, leave a comment and tell me what you think and have a great life and day and all that. Okay, welcome to this uh, uh, oil painting portrait time-lapse. In this uh, painting, I am, or this portrait painting, I am painting one of my most important paintings to this date. Uh, it is a painting I did between 2004 or in 2014, basically. And uh, it is of the Norwegian Holocaust survivor, Samuel Leon Steinmann. He and his family were sent to uh, uh, Auschwitz uh, uh, in, uh, during the war. And uh, most of his family was killed. And uh, it's really a sad story. The Norwegian Holocaust was uh, perpetrated by... Norwegians basically ordered by the Germans so yeah and he survived as he said was it wasn't really it was coincidences that made him survive and uh, as he said it was like uh, you couldn't really know it was just coincidence anyway uh, in this video, you can see me building all the different textures and how I use the brushwork to build it. You can see it here. I'm usually I'm drawing uh, with my paint. Most many people actually use a charcoal or they use some kind of sketching tool. Some also actually use a projector, which I'm very much against because it makes the whole process too easy. I prefer to build my paintings um, almost like a sculpture where I used uh, Old Holland paint which has the constituency as if it was uh, was uh, clay to build textures and build up all the shapes and uh, forms. Uh, as you can see in this video I always start with the face. I just I kind of make sure that I get the face right compared to the to the size of the painting and when I have that approximately right I just start to build it out from light from dark to light and that is also why I use that uh, uh, darkened uh, canvas uh, first I actually build up uh, the painting with um, gesso just acrylic gesso and then I use a Rohenbach, usually from... Um, I actually uh, prefer... So I, I use mostly the Old Holland paints, but I prefer to do the canvas or the canvas darkening with um, Winsor Newton Rohenbach for some reason. 
It is because it's more a greenish or neutral color and it's more easy to work on. If it's too red or it has too much color in it, it tends to become a disturbing factor when you when you build. You don't want uh, the start to have a lot of color in it. As you can see here, I just keep on building. Uh, the first thing I do, I just the first thing I do is sketching, and then I go over it again and again and again and again and again. I just keep on building more and more and more textures. Uh, as you can see here, uh, very fast. It's quite a long video. The original is almost six hours long. So, and in the original video, I play a. I play <coughs> the audio in the video is uh, the series called Outswitch, a BBC series called Outswitch. And uh, it is a story of Outswitch that is played in the background where you can have, hear a lot of the witnesses that survived talking, even some, uh, some perpetrators or some people who was there is talking in that series. So it's really... Um, it's really interesting to listen to the audio in the original video, which of course you can find in description and also after this video. Um, I also uh, have a video on my YouTube channel where you can actually see the, the unveiling of this painting and where Samuel Stenman himself has a Q&A and he talks about the, what he experienced and how he was coming home and how it was to be in Auschwitz and how the thing affected him and um, it is it is strange it was very strange for me to meet a person who was actually there and also paint him and uh, go deeper into these things because from when I was a kid I remember seeing the series World at War when I was a kid and I was also always shocked really shocked how how the carnage of the Second World War and the absurdity of the Holocaust where so many people were killed also gypsy, gypsies, homosexuals and of course uh, political dissidents and everything but also all the civilians who lost their lives during that war um, it's just uh, absurd I've always been very interested in everything human so also, the darker sides of human nature is very important to take in, so you are able to uh, see the light. Actually, if you if you also go down into the rabbit hole and take in a lot of information about what the bad things hum humans are able to do, you are also more capable of of seeing the beauty of the people who do great things and in many ways Samuel Steinman was one of the great things he uh, great people he experienced hell basically hell and he came back and for some years he was silent he didn't talk much about it but then he started to uh, do educational uh, speeches in schools and became a witness uh, to keep the memory alive of what happened so despite uh, despite experiencing these horrible things he managed to pick himself up and uh, walk on and become a great resource for for humanity which is impressing in itself because most of us will never experience anything even close to the things he experienced and uh, it should humble us uh, thinking about if he could I can and uh, in a way this is my little contribution to making the world a better place he was extremely pleased with the painting and uh, I gave it to him so he could hang it up wherever he wanted to and he chose to um, have it uh, placed in a Norwegian Holocaust Museum uh, so uh, every time they look up to this painting they can think 
about Auschwitz and what happened there and the importance of it to remember it. Now you can see I have gotten into deeper into the painting and it is funny because some people only do um, maybe a, a more sketchy rendition of it but I try to go deeper and deeper into the substance of things to give it that sculptural dimension which also in the end when I'm finished with the paintings it, all the colors that I basically in an in impressionist way are uh, setting up against each other are starting to come alive they are kind of fighting with each other on the canvas and when when uh, when uh, the light hit the canvas if it's a gray day it's more grayish if it's a sunny day all the warm colors are kind of coming to their, their right and uh, and uh, if it's evening you have the light from the lamps they give it more glow and if you turn off the lights this morning it's very cold and darker so that is what I do I just keep on putting in basically the rainbow that is what I'm doing I'm trying I'm trying to or are working to put reddish greenish all the complementary colors beside each other and at the same time as I'm trying to build textures as you see now I'm building uh, building the bricks in the wall there and I just keep on going back and forth I'm not a photorealist I just want to emphasize that I'm not a photorealist uh, but I try to give it that Rembrandtish feel to it that if you look at Rembrandt's paintings you can see how he has used the color circle or the uh, the colors of nature to and textures and thick and thin colors and putting them up against each other to create this beautiful sense of motion when you're looking at this painting you can actually feel that they are moving because it is the colors and the textures that are creating that effect in our brains and to do that you have to work thick and thin complementary colors and you just have to make it come alive basically like uh, like uh, nature do uh, yeah and closer to the face as you can see it's like quite you see it's quite roughly painted it is um, it's not photorealism maybe that is also due to I, I'm, I'm not I didn't learn to paint from anyone so on a personal level I learned from looking at paintings understanding painting you can actually see in the background there you have some the greenish and the, the you have greenish and you have on the other side you have the blue uh, so and you have the reddish in the face and different nuances here so you can see how I actually put all the colors up against each other so they can really start to work together to create a, a, the motion in the painting uh, I remember how hard it was actually to do this painting because when you have a, it wasn't really a commission because I chose myself to paint it but when you have doing something like this the responsibility for it to become really 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 good is higher than ever and uh, if I only painted a, a painting of a model or something uh, myself I can in a way uh, I don't I have I don't have to be a total neurotic when it comes to the likeness or stuff like that usually I do anyway because that's the kind of person I am but when it become personal like this when it is uh, a quite important person uh, an important case that I am very interested in in the beginning it becomes really really hard really stressful 
but it's a, it's the good form of stress and the release you have when you have done something like that that's even greater so I recommend that you do some commissions or like that and try it the best you can to to reach a good product good painting see here I kind of build around it I put in colors I put in I just paint also I paint a lot of wet in wet if you want things to kind of glide into one another it can be a good thing to paint wet in wet uh, if I want uh, some leaf, this is a cacti uh, and when as you can see I, I go over it then I move it a little bit and then I maybe paint over it again so you can all the time I'm mixing and here you can see close to it <laughs> or some some dead thing there and you see how I just kind of shape everything as I go along and here we can see uh, I've gotten deeper into it and uh, starting to finish it you can see this full process video on my YouTube channel and also as I said the, the Q&A and the actually the crown prince was there and the government and there was a lot of speeches about the Holocaust and there was a speeches uh, from the uh, Holocaust Museum and uh, some media and it was a really good day I call this a good day's work it was uh, you know I feel I've done something of value uh, actually 2010 I also painted a portrait of the Norwegian uh, resistant fighter Gunnar seems to be it's called Chakan, like the cheek. They called him the cheek, and that was back in 2010. And sadly, I wasn't hadn't hadn't been starting to m make videos back then, so uh, yeah. So I don't have a video of that painting. Uh, that was also a very honorable uh, thing. As you see here, that spot of light in the in the in that photograph that photograph is not of his family but I think it was a very nice thing to place that photograph there and when I took the pictures the Sun was coming into the room and it hit exactly that thing right on that photograph that kind of reminds you of his family uh, and all the other uh, people who perished during the Holocaust yeah, so here you see I just keep on going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and you in a way you could actually do this forever there's also always another level you can you can go into and uh, stuff like that yeah so here we are at the end of the of the video and I hope that you can go to my YouTube uh, you can give this a thumbs up and that you can leave a comment that you can maybe go to patreon and become a patreon supporter for only uh, maybe for a dollar five for five dollars you can actually become uh, owner of my patreon giveaway painting every month a small painting that i give away uh, to one patron and if not uh, leave a comment share it with your artsy friends and i see you in the next video